What's up, YouTube? I'm Z, and this channel shows you the world through my lens. I just heard 616 in LA. Obviously, before that, I heard Euphoria. Obviously, before that, I've heard everything else. <laughs> um, here's the thing, guys. In, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I by no means feel like I am an ultimate authority on anything in life, okay? Uh, in my humble opinion, Kendrick is winning at this moment before I hit play on this track, okay? But I do not believe that it is a landslide like Drake has no chance because what I'm not going to do on this channel, I'm not going to get caught up in the hyper-technicals. Now, don't get me wrong. I love hyper-technicals. Some of my favorite rappers do the super crazy complex hyper-technicals. Okay, but we can't get caught up in the flashiness of that and forget that in a battle, it's more about what's being said. The package that it comes in comes secondary. Okay, we have to remember that. If we forget that, we're judging it wrong. Okay, now I'm going to give you a really quick analogy before I hit play. I know y'all watch sports, okay, because hip hop and sports are tied together really well. If you watch sports and you've ever complained about refs not, not refing a game fairly or giving the game away to a team, ask yourself right now, are you being one of those refs? Have you decided before we hit play that Drake is winning or Kendrick is winning? Ask yourself that. Okay, For me, I want to be one of those good refs that people don't complain about because I, I judge the game fairly. That's what I'm here to do. So just keep that in mind. All right. If y'all didn't see my last video, 616 in LA, uh, my beard got shaved off by my wife by accident. She wanted to help me with my beard. I said, yes, she never does. She accidentally shaved it off. So I'm in the process of growing it back. Uh, but I did drop a bomb in that video. I can't get mad at her because she's pregnant. I was actually making the announcement this week. So I'm going to do a video on that this week. We're super excited. Uh, but it means some stuff for the channel. So I'll update you guys when we get there. Enough talk. Drake, you got some climbing to do, buddy. I hope this is strong. Here we go. Maybe in this song, you shouldn't start by saying, Nigga, I said it. I know that you mad. I've emptied a clip over friendly or jabs. You mentioned my seed and I deal with his dad. I gotta go bad. I gotta go bad. And I paused it real quick, but I think I heard. Mm. Mm. That's the beat that, uh, that we got a snippet of at the end of Push Ups. So, I mean, he said he's had one in the chamber ready. Damn. But I'm assuming he must have added to it because he waited till now. So he must have added to it once he heard Kendrick's disses. I don't know who this is at the beginning. But knowing the way that Drake trolls, my educated guess is that it's his mom. Okay? And he's immediately responding to the whole, like, Kendrick saying, like, you can't say the N-word. You, you, I don't want to hear you say the N-word anymore. And he's right. He's like, really? Oh, word? I. Maybe in this song, you shouldn't start by saying, Nigga, I said it. I know that you mad. I've emptied a clip over friendly or jabs. You mentioned my seed and I deal with his dad. I gotta go bad. I gotta go bad. You mentioned my seed. Now you gotta deal with his dad. Me. <sighs> yeah, Getting serious, boys drop, and girls. Drop, drop, drop a 50 bag for the mob in a spot. 50 bad, 29 for the thought. Uh, I was really, really trying to keep it Bro. PG. I was really, really trying to keep it PG. If you had a set, they get your ass a DP. But you civilian gang in real life, you PC. You know who really bang a set, my nigga YG. You know who really bang a set, my nigga Chuck T. You know who even bang a set out there, CB. The nigga cold, lose his sleep on this, it ain't me. You no, come on, man. Cole, bro, I've said this on the channel, so y'all can go check. When this whole thing started, I said my favorite out of the three was J. Cole. For me, the, the ranking between these three was uh, J. Cole, Kendrick, and then Drake. That's how I felt about it. Hang on. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I'm back. Uh... 
Forgot my train of thought, but let's go. PC, you know who really bang a set my nigga YG. You know who really bang a set my nigga Chuck T. You know who even bang a set out there CB. Now I wonder if he's talking about Chris Brown here. That's the only CB that I know. Unless he's talking about people that again are like close to his crew. And nigga cold lose sleep on this. It ain't me. You better have some. That's what I was saying, man. J. Cole, bro. <sighs> Honestly, like you did this to yourself. You've left yourself. It would be better if seven minute drill never happened. But doing it, apologizing, then taking it off of all platforms, you've made yourself an open target for the rest of the year. And he's my he was my favorite out of the three of them. Ugh. I mean, it's true, a nigga slimy for my AP. Just okay. like I met your nigga slimy for his main squeeze. Out here begging for attention, nigga, say please. So Metro catching some heat now, too. Uh, I wonder if this diss is going to be, like, not just at Kendrick and maybe at multiple people. Uh, but, I mean, he's admitting some stuff here. Now, this is powerful because he's saying, yeah, like, I did get robbed from my AP. Uh, I believe that's what he's saying there when he says someone slimed him for his AP. And he's like, just like Metro... I guess Metro's friend slimed him for his main squeeze. That's messed up, if that's true. Um, but this is an interesting approach from Drake right now. That we came. I mean, this part I agree with 100%. I've said this in the diss track so far. If you drop bombs and you drop accusations, you got to have receipts. Because if it doesn't get proven, like if there's no way to like validate what you said, I do think that the punch loses some steam, in my opinion. Right? When you say something about somebody and it's true, it hits 10 times harder. Okay? So I agree with this part. If the stuff Kendrick says does turn out to be true, it hits hard. If it's not true, uh, your, your diss loses some, in my opinion. Read. I mean, it's true a nigga slimy for my AP. Just like how Metro nigga slimy for his main squeeze. Out here begging for attention, nigga, say please. Always rapping like you about to get the slaves free. You just acting like an activist is make believe. Damn. Don't even go back to your hood and plant on money trees. Say Damn. And that's one of my favorite songs. By the way, uh, we're not going to miss the fact in the video. I believe this is the Good Kid Mad City van. My favorite Kendrick album. I haven't heard uh, Mr. Morale and Big Step, so I don't know what that one is is like. But from everything I've heard from Kendrick, that's my favorite album. And the fact that he's like just been towing this van and is like, I think he's at a junkyard. I don't know if he's going to junk it or something. but uh, And then he says, you won't even go. You're a fake activist. You're not really about that life. You just rap about it. And then says, you won't even go to the hood and plant money trees. And that's one of my favorite songs from that album. Damn. Okay, Drake. Okay. Don't even go back to your hood and plant no money trees. Say you hate the girls I fuck, but what you really mean? I've been with black and white and everything that's in between. You the black messiah wiping up a mixed queen. And hit vanilla cream to help out with your self-esteem. Also... <sighs> Yo. So that was... Oh. That's interesting. So this is Drake replying to the whole like race bars, like by him being like white because he's mixed, so on and so forth. Now the Kendrick, you know, fans and supporters have been in my comments telling me that when he says that it's not about being racist against like a biracial person, it's more of a culture versus the way Drake, you know, uses and then doesn't use the culture when it's to his benefit. Look. I can't weigh in on that because I'm not, I'm not in that fold, right? So I, I'm like an outsider viewing in. Uh, however, from Drake's point of view, if he's like, "Yo, you're talking about me because I'm mixed," you're supposed to be the black messiah, and you, you didn't even marry a black girl, you married a mixed girl. That's a great response from Drake from that angle. Obviously, culturally speaking, people are gonna say that's a miss because that means that Drake didn't understand what Kendrick was saying, but. If you just take it at surface level, that was a great response to that. Damn. I don't know what that part means. Why you never hold your son and tell him say cheese? We could 
left the kids out of this, don't blame me. We could have left the kids out of this, don't blame me. So what Drake's basically saying is like, because Kendrick said, you brought my family into this, right? I think he said something like that. Drake's basically saying, well, you know, I actually only brought your wife into it, <laughs> Whitney. Uh, I didn't say anything about your kids. You brought the kids into it. And so he's saying we actually could have left the kids out and kept it just like me, you, and significant others. Uh, but you took it there. So that is a fair point. Drake didn't really say anything about Kendrick's kids before that. I do have to admit that. Um, but this line right here, I'm not really sure how to ch take it because I don't know enough about Kendrick. I almost wonder if he's saying like, you're saying you're a good dad and stuff, but then why why aren't there like pictures of you and your kid? Because the only time I, I would say, say cheese is for someone to take a picture. So I wonder if that's him saying like, I, I have pictures of me and Adonis doing all sorts of stuff together, doing things like... There's no pictures of you doing things with your kid out there. But that's a privacy thing. I don't know. But that's maybe how I'm taking that line. Well, your son and tell him, say cheese. We could have left the kids out of this. Don't blame me. You a dog and you know it. You just play sweet. Your baby mama catch was always screaming, say me. Damn. You did it dirty all your life. You trying to make peace. I heard that one of them little kids might be day free. No. Don't make it day free. No, listen, this is, but li I got to come with the same energy, right? This is where I'm split, Drake. If this is a legit rumor, like this is a legit thing that people think about one of Kendrick kids, this line hits super hard. If it's not, it's a great way to make him think some negative stuff about his own family, but it doesn't hit as hard when it's not true. So I, I kept the same energy with Kendrick. I'm keeping the same energy with Drake. You got to keep it fair. But damn. Don't make it day freeze. Because if your GM is your BM secret BD, then this is all making plenty fucking sense to me. If your GM general manager is your BM's secret BD. So if your G general manager is your baby mama's secret baby daddy, then it all makes sense to me. Is your BM secret BD? Then this is all Shit. making plenty fucking sense to me. Hey, let that shorty breathe. Shake that ass, bitch. Hey. Hands on your knees. Yes. Hands on your knees. Yes. This is a response straight to that sexy red line. Hands on your <laughs> knees. Shake that ass for Drake. Now shake that ass for free. Yeah, yeah. We're not that kind of free. I'm talking about my nigga Dave. Yo Bro, this dude is stupid. He took that sexy red line and uh, turned it around, applied it to Whitney because of free. all the allegations that he just talked about. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. We're not that kind of free. Come I'm on, talking that, about this my nigga days. Yo, man, a little K, we call that shit a mini Dre. He always said I overlooked him, I was staring straight. These bars go over Kenny head no matter what I say. I know you like to keep it short, so let me paraphrase. Knew it was smoke when Abel hit us with the serenade. Nigga say No, 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 okay, we gotta pause it right before he gets into that. Uh, he's starting to talk about the weekend. So this is not just about Kendrick. Like, we heard him mention uh, Metro earlier. Now it sounds like he's talking about the weekend as well, but we just got some more short jokes. Now... I feel similar to this, similar about this, that I was feeling about the race bars. Again, I can't say I understand the cultural aspect of the race bars that, again, Kendrick fans are trying to tell me in the comments. But on a surface level, for me, it's like when you keep hitting with the same punches, those punches are weaker and less effective over, like, they just are, okay? So, you know, when Drake gets called a white boy and when he's calling him short, I got to call it fair on both sides. That's starting to get a little bit old for me. Uh, but those are those are bars, though, because he talked about uh, Little K, like a small AK, Mini Drake, the guns, gun reference, but him being short. Aaron Straight, these bars go over Kenny here no matter what I say. Because he's short. I know you like to keep it short, short. so let me paraphrase. Right. Knew it was smoke when Abel hit us with the serenade. Nigga say, uh, uh. Almost started reaching for my ways. No. Drop a fifty bag for the mob. Bro. Drop a fifty bag, twenty nine for the thigh. 
Bro, this is what I hate about Drake too because he's dropping this song and I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. Like, I haven't left the studio yet, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be singing this hook all day because it just, he does this stuff that's so catchy, it just gets stuck in your head. This is one of those. Draw, draw. Yo, this is so catchy. I'm in a spot. Drop a 50 bag, 29 for the dog. I was really, really trying to keep it. Yo. Oh, gunshots. Okay. He crushed the van, by the way. I know we saw that in the video. Yeah. We stop playing around and take this shit serious, though. What is this? Niggas is a joke. I take it serious, though. Yeah. Look. That's a, that's a hearse. Uh, so that thing slides out. Then you can put the, I think, the coffin in and then put it in. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a hearse. Yeah. Look. If Drake shooters doing TikToks, nigga, really shooting in your gang. That's P's brother. Y'all ain't getting shit shot, nigga. Can't uh. listen to the stick talking. Falsetto saving for a hip hop, nigga. You don't even be at home, dog. You a souvenir out the gift shop, nigga. Still mad Ooh. about that one hoe. We ain't even fuck. I just live lock with her. I get acting when it's war time. I ain't even really let my dick drop, nigga. No, 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 no. This dude's going stupid right now. First of all, this is something I have to talk about. Drake's beat selection. In terms of like we're having a rap battle, I'm battling you, I'm dropping a diss track. Drake's beat selection is better. It just is, okay? Um, you hear those songs, it immediately gets you into that mode. With Kendrick, it's like he has to get you into that mode with the way that he's rapping and the way that he's talking. The beat on its own doesn't really do that, okay? So that's right away. I have to mention that Kendrick's beat selection has not been as good as drake's when it comes to like this is a beef thing that beat is hard and the way he's rapping on this this dude is floating on this beat right now that's what peace, brother y'all ain't getting shit shot nigga can't listen to the stick talking falsetto saving for a hip-hop nigga you don't even be at home dog you a souvenir out the gift shop nigga stick you don't even be at home you're a souvenir out the gift shop oh my god God. I'll settle saving for a hip hop nigga. You don't even be at home, dog. You a souvenir out the gift shop, nigga. Still mad about that one hoe. We ain't even fuck. I just live locked with her. I get acting when it's war time. I ain't even really let my dick drop, nigga. What the fuck? I heard Rick drop, nigga. Talking something about a nose job, nigga. Oh, Zimmy got a side effect of jealousy and doubt. I never told y'all niggas put a nigga in. Rick Ross. Bro, this dude just said you're on Ozempic. Isn't that the. The miracle drug that's growing going around right now that people are losing like crazy, crazy weight from it. He just said the doctor didn't tell you jealousy is a side effect of taking Ozempic. Bro, no. This dude is stupid. But listen, here's the thing. I know people are gonna say that this is a bad thing, that he's he's not just focusing on Kendrick. But he's in a weird situation, okay? He's in a weird situation where he's being targeted by multiple people. And the other time in history where we can talk about that, uh, where there's like several people against one guy, is Tupac, right? Like, if you go back and you listen to Machiavelli, uh, the Don, like, you know, Seven Days, Don Caluminati album, whatever, you know which one I'm talking about. If you go and listen to that, it's him versus like everybody. And he's name dropping people all over the place. So I, I have to say that like he's in an awkward spot. I think he has to reply to some of these other guys. I hope that there's more on Kendrick and that wasn't the only Kendrick stuff because I think Kendrick does need more than what we've heard. Okay, I have to be honest. I'm by the nose job, nigga. Oh, Zimbabwe got a side effect of jealousy and doubt. I never told y'all niggas put a nigga in the bars. Let a nigga rock kind of like your old job, nigga. House sitting on some land, but it's how no one even really know y'all niggas. Bitches got to drive two hours for your pay. I'm just to give a blow job, nigga. Must have started up a snowball because my last record deal was 400 ends. These days, that's a low bar, nigga. The drug bar reference, snowball, low bar, yo. But then talking about his record deal because people are clowning him for that. But he's saying like my record deal is 400 million. I talked about this. Nobody has ever signed in the history of music signed a deal that big. Just him. Right? So I don't know if you can really diss him for that. Uh, he said Rick Ross because Rick Ross has been clowning Drake about the mansions and the stuff. And he's basically saying, well, your mansion is that big and sitting on all this land because it's in the middle of nowhere. Girls got to drive two hours to get to you. 
he ain't lying though. <laughs> I mean, although Rick Ross is so rich, he could probably like fly him out. But I get the point of the bar. Um, he also said something else there. I, he's saying a lot right now. Oh, this bar right here. He went to the correctional officer lines again. You said you're talking about bars. Let them rot. Yeah, like your old job. Even really know y'all niggas, bitches gotta drive two hours for your pay them just to give a blow job. Nigga must have started up a snowball because my last record deal was 400. That's hard. These days, that's a low bar, nigga. Mm. Hey. That's also hard because he's saying that when I signed that, I got the 400 mil, but like my stock has improved even since then. So if I signed it today, 400 mil will be low. That's hard. Who's next on the list? Which one of my so called niggas? Which one of my so called niggas? Which one of my so called niggas need a chef on a clip? Always knew I had to smoke y'all niggas. Good kid, man, city. Ooh, and notice, I, I'm gonna point this out. Notice how I feel like he's saying the N word even more frequently than he typically does. And I feel like that's not an accident either. This is that in itself is a response to Kendrick saying that he, you know, we don't want you to say the N word anymore. And Rick Ross saying it too, basically. Need a chef on a clip. Damn. I always knew I had to smoke y'all niggas. Good kid, mad city van. We'll pot the latch and make the door slide. Tears running down my cheek, laughing at you, pussy dying. It's a war cry. Ooh. Your music getting played. That's a bar, too. Hey, listen, anyone who says Drake doesn't have bars, laughing at you, uh, crying, laughing at you, that's a, at you dying. That's a war cry. Like a war cry is like, oh, blah, 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 we're going to kill you. I don't know why I went with that one, but I guess, you know, it was on brand. <laughs> but, uh, but war cry, like <laughs> war because you're dying, cry. That was hard. Yo, that was a bar. That was a bar. Tears running down my cheek, laughing at you, pussy dying. It's a war cry. Mm -hmm. Look at music getting played in all the spots where boys got a little more pride. That's why all your friends dip into Atlanta paying just to find a tour guy. Able run your oh. fucking bread, need to buy some more chains for some more guys. Let me find another street nigga I could take to the game. No. Let me get a use for ride for a rapper, take the nigga on a horse ride. Bro, this dude is going stupid right now. The weekend. The weekend's getting some of the worst of this. Yo. Bro, he's doubling down on the on the gay accusations basically about the weekend. Look, I don't judge, man. If that's if that's your life, it is, but I feel like those lines hit hard because the weekend is notoriously known for like the overly sexual songs about what he does with women, right? So from that angle, it's a it's a strong hit. Uh, to to kind of shoot that shot, and he said Atlanta. We know what Atlanta's known for too. So, yeah. I could take to the game court side. Let me get a use Ferrari for a rapper. Take the nigga on a horse ride. Anything to take a horse ride. Use Ferrari because like Ferrari's symbol is a horse. Game court nice. side. Let me get a use Ferrari for a rapper. Take the nigga on a horse ride. Anything to take a spotlight off the fact the boss is a drug down little punk sissy from the north side. That's still the weekend. Drugged out punk sissy from the north side. That's still the weekend, yo. Anything to take a spotlight off the fact the boss is a drugged out little punk sissy from the north side. Rock him talking shit again. Gas cause you hit my being first, nigga. Do the math who I was hitting in. I ain't even know you rat still cause they only talking about your fit again. Probably gotta have a kid again for you think of dropping any shit again. Even when you do drop, they gon' say you should have model cause it's mid again. Smoking 50 by they should have put you on the first one trying to get it in. Oh, hold up. Let me pull that back. Uh, we're going to have to hear that part again. Listen, if you don't like the pausing and rewinding, this might be the wrong place for you. But when he said Rakim, I was like, why is he talking about Rakim? But then he did a Fenty reference. Rihanna. Is ASAP Rocky's real name Rakim? That would make sense because he says Rocky, right? Hang on a second. Let me look this up super fast. Uh, Oops. Come on, come on, come on. ASAP. Rocky name. It's like one of the top things being looked up right now, I guess. Rakim Athelston Mayers. Damn. So he's talking about that. I was like, why is he beefing with Rakim? What did Rakim do? Uh, no, we're talking about ASAP Rocky. Oh, shit. Okay, I got to pay attention to those lines from that lens. Hold on. This is a drug down low, punk sissy from the north side. Rock him talking shit again. Gas cause you hit my being first, nigga. Do the math who I was hitting in. I ain't even know you Damn. rest there cause they only talking about your fit again. Probably 
gotta have a kid again for you think of dropping any shit again. Even when you do drop, they gon' say you should have model cause it's mid again. Smoking fatty by the shit. Bro, I, and that drop, like, wait to have a kid again before you drop again. I almost wonder if that's, like, the hype and the clout around, like, you and Rihanna having a baby was a good way that your name's in everything. So that's a good time for you to drop. Because if you don't drop during that, it's not going to do so well. I think that's the angle that he's going for there. Uh, but he said if you do drop, then I say you should stick to modeling. Because we know, like, he's on, like, the wearing, like, the fashion stuff and, like, all right, that's a hit. That's it again. Even when you do drop, they gon' say you should model cause admit again. That hit. Smoking fifty body should have put you on the first one trying to get it in. Ask Fring if this a good idea. The next time you cut it in a bit again. Shit, leave and tell your leader boy alone before you get your head split again. Yo, who's he? Fring. I didn't recognize Fring, but if he's talking about Rihanna, and he's saying that Rihanna's gonna tell him not to go after Drake because he gets his head split. Yo, that's messed up if that's what he was meaning right Next there. Next time you cut it in a bit again. <laughs> shit, leave and tell your leader boy alone before you get your head split again. Pluto shit made me sick to my stomach. We ain't never really been through it. Lean away, he a fucking lane, so I know he had to be an influence. These niggas had a plan. No, no, no. Okay, this guy's like name dropping all over the place. Give me a second, guys, because there's no way I'm going a, I'm to a let that slide. He said Lee and Wayne. We got to see who that is. Metro. This dude is dissing people by name. But, like, he's going even as far as, like, mentioning government. Like, he said Abel again with The weekend. That's Abel, Abel Tesfaye is his real name. He said Pluto. So that's his nickname. I don't know what Future's real name is. But now he's saying Metro's real name, <laughs> Leland Wayne. Bro. <laughs> you leave a boy alone before you get your head split again. Pluto shit made me sick to my stomach. We ain't never really been through it. Leland Wayne, he a fucking lane, so I know he had to be an influence. These niggas had a plan, and they finally found a way to rope you into it. Damn. Two separate albums, this, and I just did the Kim to it. Nigga, skim through it. Me and Savage had a hose drip. I just did the Kim to it. Skim through it. I just did the Kim to it. Skim through it. Uh, What does that mean? Nah, look, man, I, I really don't want to miss on anything that's being said here because if I'm going to listen to uh, the next track, which is apparently where Kendrick replied, I got to know everything. And I'm not just going to go past it if I don't get it. Uh, this, what does this mean? Oh, damn. Okay, okay, I see what he's saying. So apparently Kim ha Kim Kardashian has... Because I was the K was also uh, capital in Kim. So I was talking about a, a Kim, I don't know. I guess I should have known it's that Kim. But she has a fashion brand called Skim. That's why he's saying Skim through it. So he's referencing her brand. But I wonder if that's also a way for him to dig at Kanye, like very casually, like... If that's a dig at Kanye, like, you know, roundabout, you know, secondhand diss, that's super disrespectful. He's like, I'm not even going to give you a full bar. While I'm talking about these guys, I'm going to give you a little side side tap. Uh, that's super disrespectful if that's what he just did. Damn. Into it. Two separate albums, this and I just did a cam to it. Nigga, scam through it. Me and Savage had a hose dripping where it shows. Almost had a swim Damn. to it. K dot shit is only hitting hard when baby King put his pen to it. Ross calling me the white boy and the shit kind of got a ring to it. Because all these rappers waving white flags while the whole fucking club sing to it. Murder scene on your man tonight. Talk to him, yo. Yo, this is the thing, man. This is, He's doing a good job right now of rebuttaling what everybody has said, right? And that is a big part of like rap battles. If you say some crazy shit about me and in my response, I don't address any of it and I just come at you with like your stuff, I'm going to lose. Whatever crazy stuff you said about me, I have to address it and then give my counter punches back. That's just like the formula. That's what you have to do. So he's doing a good job. Now we still have two minutes left, but guys, at this point, my criticism is that we need more Kendrick shots. So I'm hoping... Than these last couple minutes that we get, we have more Kendrick stuff, because I don't think it's it's enough for everyone else. I don't think it's enough for Kendrick what we've heard so far. So let's see what the rest is. Cause all these rappers waving white flags while the whole fucking club sing to it. Murder yeah. scene on your man tonight, then come to vigil with the candlelight. Body at the fucking body, and you know Rick reading my Miranda rights. I'm going on vacation. Now I hope next time y'all plan it right. Cause you gotta pay for saying my name. Guess now niggas understand the price now. 
New Ho King. That's the uh, restaurant that Damn Kendrick. Damn, gas now, niggas understand the price now. What? That's the restaurant that Kendrick mentioned in Euphoria when he was doing the whole accent thing, like making fun of uh, Drake. Uh, apparently, this restaurant has like gotten a huge boost in business from that mention. So, you know, big ups to them. But Drake went to the rest. <laughs> He's gonna film at the restaurant. That's hard. That's a great response. <laughs> Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone go hand him a Grammy right now. Where's your uncle? <laughs> hey, that's clever. You know what that is? You know how Kendrick had the line with like the OVO D writers, right? He's talking about that. That's that's Drake's response to that line because he's basically saying that K Dot fans are D writers. He's saying Kendrick just opened his mouth. Somebody give him a Grammy right now. Yeah, sometimes y'all go a little too far. Again, I like Kendrick more than Drake, but that was a great response to that. I like this beat switch too, this one. Hey, Kendrick just opened his mouth. Someone go hand him a Grammy right now. Where's your uncle at? Cause I wanna talk to the man of the house. West Coast niggas do phase, right? Come get this ass whooping, I'm handing him out. You wanna take off a for real? Then come get his legacy out of my house. Oh, snap. Cause that's, um,. That's Pharrell's uh, chain collect, like jewelry con collection, right? Because from my understanding, Drake is like a collector of like rap memorabilia because he bought that Tupac ring. And when y'all mentioned in the comments that that's what Kendrick was talking about when he said like make Tupac turn in his grave because I think Drake bought Tupac's ring last year, but I also think he bought Pharrell's jewelry collection last year. Um, and this must be all of it. I don't know who this is that he's got wearing it, but uh, damn. That's what I'm handing him out. You want to take off a for real? Then come get his legacy out of my house. A cease and desist is for hoes. Can't listen to lies that come out of your mouth. You caught a two-pack of steak. And beg them to sue me and get that shit down. Now see? Now see? This is what I'm talking about. So he just addressed the cease and desist. Now, when Kendrick mentioned that Drake had put out a cease and desist for like that, I lost a lot of respect for Drake. I thought, if that's true, bro, that was a really weak move. And now Drake's coming out and basically saying, uh, why are you telling lies about that? I didn't do a cease and desist on like that. Can't listen to the lies that are coming out of your mouth. Damn, and then he basically said, you're saying that about me when you're the one who contacted Tupac's estate to have me take down the diss. Bro, this is, okay, this is what I needed, Drake. We still got two minutes. We got to get two more minutes of this because this is how you come back. For real. Yo. Can't get his legacy out of my house. A cease and desist is for hoes. Can't listen to lies that come out of your mouth. You caught a two-pack of steak. And That's too much rage. I'm losing perspective on beef. Happy co-parenting, happy divorce. Boy, when the same beat and I kill you for fun. Your daddy got robbed by top. You stunning and Wayne like father like son. And Anthony set up the plays. Whoa, 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 whoa. So me and get this shit down. I'm losing perspective on beef. Boy, when the same beat and I kill you for fun. Your daddy got robbed by top. You stunning and Wayne like father like son. Your daddy got robbed by top. Now, I don't know about like if this is a known situation or if he's shining light on something new. If you know, let me know down below. But he just compared that because Kendrick had a line where he was basically talking about Birdman and Wayne, right? Um, and he's basically flipped that now too and saying that your relationship with top is like Stunna and Wayne, like father, like son. Or no, he's saying your daddy got robbed by top. And, to and he said... Uh, Top said, drop and give me 50. So he's basically saying, Top robbed you and he robbed your dad. That could be like a triple. So he could almost be saying that Top is like Stunna and you are like Wayne because we know that situation, how like Birdman didn't want to pay Wayne. Like we know how that ended. But I think more specifically, it's that your dad is like Birdman and you are Wayne. So Birdman got like you, your dad got robbed. And you got robbed like father, like son. But that could be a triple if he meant it that in the other way too. Sam beat and I kill you for fun. Your daddy got robbed by top. You stunning and Wayne like father, like son. Anthony set up the plays. Kojo be charging you double for none. They shook about what I'ma say. But texting your phone like we already won. You tell me what I shouldn't say. 
But fuck it, my nigga, it's already done. We already Is that a bra hanging right there? We already won. You tell me what I shouldn't say. But fuck it, my nigga, it's already done. We already know it's a 20v1. We already know why you went number one. It's clearly because of the boy. Mm. The honorable thing is to give me the loop. He ain't lying about that, though. He said, we know why you went number one. It's because you, you mentioned the boy. Uh, like that went number one for like three weeks or something like that or four weeks. I'm not sure. Uh, but obviously, like, it, it was because of the attention it garnered because of the diss. Uh, if it wasn't the diss, I'm not sure it would have done the same numbers. Uh, I don't know if Euphoria has charted or not because I do think that was an official release. Can't speak on it because I haven't looked that up. You know why you went number one? It's clearly because of the boy. The honorable That's thing is Michael to give me stuff. the loop. You right about for the big three. It's only big D in this video proof. My son should go play at the park. Bro, that was... Yo, Drake. <laughs> Drake. That was a wild line to say, bro. You write about F the big three. It's only big D, like big Drake, but big D... And there's video proof because there's apparently like some video maybe circulating out there that like of of his activities. Bro, that was a wild line. <laughs> <laughs> it's only big D and it's video proof. My son should go play at the park. Two light skin kids, this shit will be cute. Unless you don't want to be seen with anyone that isn't blacker than you. We get Bro. It. We got it. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. We get that you like to put gin in your juice. We get that you think that you bishop in juice. When you put your hand. Bro, this dude is going stupid. This is what we needed, Drake. Our son should play together. Two light-skinned kids in the park because Kendrick's uh, wife or whatever she is, uh, baby mama, is uh, mixed. But you don't want to be seen hanging with anyone that's not blacker than you. Then he dropped the Tupac line, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Then he did the juice reference, the movie that Pac was in, and the character Bishop. Bro, with anyone that isn't blacker than you, we get it. We got it. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. We get it. You like to put gin in your juice. We get it. You think that you're bishop in juice. When you put your hands on your girl, is it self defense because she's bigger than you? Your back is back to the short joke. But yo, I mean, is he also, I mean, didn't he kind of say that? Like, is he, is he saying that he beats his girl? He said, when you put your hands on your girl, is it self-defense because she's bigger than you? Bishop and juice. When you put your hands on your girl, is it self-defense because she's bigger than you? Your back is up against the curb. You digging for dirt, she be digging for proof. Why did you move to New York? Is it because you live in that bachelor life? Proposed in 2015, but don't want to make her your actual wife. I'm guessing no. this wedding ain't happening right. Because we know the girls that you actually like. The darkest secrets are coming in light. It's all on your face like what happened to Mike. Oh, shit. Bro. I can almost guarantee you that part is going to go over people's heads and they're not going to understand how sick that was. This dude just went crazy. He's talking about, I guess they got, I guess they got engaged in 2015. It's 2024 now, almost 10 years later. He's saying, are you ever going to actually marry her? And he's saying... No, because we know the girls that you actually like. So he's doubling down on the whole like Kendrick is like this guy that's like, you know, black, you know, black activist, black over everything. She's mixed. So he says, we know the girls that you actually like. Then he said, the dark is coming to light. The girls that you actually like, the darkest secrets are coming to light. Your darkest secrets are coming to light. We right after he said, we know the type of girls that you really like. Your darkest secrets. He's saying that your girl's not dark enough for you. So you don't really like her. That's why you don't really want to wife her. That's why you haven't got married yet. Bro. And then he said, darkest secrets coming to light. So it's being exposed, right? It's all on your face like what happened to Mike. Dark coming to light. Michael was obviously dark when he was younger. And then over time was white. Bro. That is a Bar. And the fact that he's continuing the Mike references from this whole back and forth, which Mike, you know, Mike Jack, Mike, Michael Jackson references have been pretty heavily involved in these tracks. That was a bar. And if you say that wasn't a bar, you're a hater. 
pipe. It's all on your face, like what happened to Mike? Oh shit, bro. It's all making sense. Maybe I'm Prince and you actually Mike. Michael was praying his features would change, so people believe that he's actually white. Top will make you do features for change. Get on pop records and rap for the whites and wait. You say your brother Jermaine, but you only hint and stay out of the light. Oh shit. If somebody listened to this part and said that this wasn't a bar, you are a deriding, glazing hater. There's no way you listen to that and don't tell me that, that is a nasty scheme. It's okay. It's okay. Right after he did the darkest, dark, Darkest Secret coming to light, Michael's face. That was a setup for this. I thought that was the bar. That bar was just the setup for this. This dude just said, Michael was praying his features would change so people would believe that he's actually white. So now he's talking about his like facial features, his skin pigment. He wanted to change so he could actually portray being white and not black, right? Okay, so that's that. What does this have to do with anything? Because right before this, he said, maybe I'm Prince and you're Mike, right? He's flipping the roles. This next line is how he delivers it. Features for Watch change, this. so people believe that he's actually white. Here, come, here comes. Here comes. Features for change. Get on pop records and rap for the white. People believe that he's actually white. Top will make you. Top would make you do a feature for change. Get on pop records and rap for whites bro so he's doubling down on those lines he's already talked about his some of his biggest songs are features with like obviously not black artists big pop artists white artists we talked about taylor swift we talked about maroon 5 there's more on that list top would make you do a feature for change get on pop records and rap for whites and the fact is that, like, the way he's doing this, if he's saying that he's Michael Jackson, he's also kind of, like, flipping it to how, like, Joe Jackson would have made Michael do certain things that he would have thought would, like, progress his career and make him more mainstream, like, appeal. Bro. That, and then this is where it this is where he really sends it right here this next change. line this is crazy rap for the whites and wait you say your brother Jermaine but you want him to stay out of the light J Cole right you say your brother Jermaine you wanted him to stay out of the light Michael Jackson's brother right stay out of the limelight the spotlight Jermaine If somebody listened to that part and said, that was mid, that was trash, you are a hater. You are falling for the the package that hibbity skibbity shibbity dibbity dibbity comes in and you're not paying attention to what's being said. Those things are great, but what's being said has to weigh more. Bro. Oh shit. Just follow me, right? Cause nothing you say ain't gonna bother me, right? I get off the plane and nothing has changed. I handed the lala with all of my ice. Handed the lala with all of my ice. Handed the lala. Back, back to the, like, you're not gonna snatch my chain, so he's wearing all of his ice. Lala with all of my ice. This shit gotta be over by now for anyone out here that's calling it right. You did. You did. <laughs> um, listen, that last line, uh, Drake, I'll be honest with you, bro. I don't think it's over. I also know that Kendrick has dropped again, so I, I have to be careful about what I say here. But in my humble opinion, when I started this track, Drake was slightly losing. At the end of this track, in my humble opinion, Drake is up. Drake has caught up out of that hole, and I believe that he is winning by the end of this track. Because what he did in the last two-ish minutes of this track where he finally was like, all right, I've, I've dealt with all the other stuff. I gave my light jab to Kendrick. I talked about everybody else. And this last part where it's just about Kendrick, this is what we needed. Come on. You did. Oh, he said it again. <laughs> there's no way to hide. There's no way to hide. You know what I mean? They hired a crisis management team to clean up the fact that you beat on your queen. The picture you painted ain't what it seemed. You did. They hired a crisis management team to hide the fact that you beat up your queen, you're dead. 
the stuff you say ain't what it seems. Okay. Um, here's the thing. I'm going to keep it 100 all the way through. The stuff that he's like, the accus- accusatory, uh, accusatory, accusatory stuff, it hits hard already. If it's true, it hits really hard. If it's just stuff that you're saying uh, and it's just like this psychological angle to make you think about stuff, I think it's a little weaker, but it'll work for that purpose. Okay. And I said the same thing about Kendrick, same energy. This is a long ass video because I'm trying to catch all the bars. I don't want to do a second video where I listen to this first and then I come back later to break down the bars. No, this is first listen. We're going to try to catch everything that we can catch. If I miss stuff, y'all got to let me know. But right now, Drake is up. I got to check out what Kendrick dropped because he dropped right after. So, oh my God. If y'all are still here, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.